Hey guys, my name is Cody with Go Fast Campers. I designed the Turbo Cubby, and today we're going to be taking you through building a cabinet. All right, so I've got all the tools we will need to build one of our cabinets here. Uh, to start with, we'll need a 5 30 seconds Allen key, um, a 7 16 wrench or 7 16 socket, a half inch socket or a half inch wrench, um, a 3 8 inch or quarter inch drive um, ratchet a 5 16 allen wrench or a 5 16 uh, hex allen key drive for a socket and it will make it go by quite a bit quicker if you have some sort of impact drill as uh, it takes quite a bit of space to build one and there's lots of parts involved um, it's nice to have either a large size table or some decent carpet space uh, somewhere to build it at uh, just somewhere that's in the open that won't damage uh, the powder coat or any of the parts as you build it here, uh, we will be working on what looks to be roughly a five foot by six foot table to build the cabinet on. Um, generally won't need much more space than that uh, as you'll be building it all together and slowly move into a smaller space. So uh, if you ordered your cabinet to be delivered right to your house, this is what will show up at your front door. Uh, if you're getting one with your camper or topper, it will come to your partner shop or your Belgrade install location looking just like this. So let's open it up. So, uh, the standard cabinet uh, or turbo cubby uh, will come looking just like this uh, with some bolt kits and some parts laying out with packaging, wrapping everything together. Just gonna grab all of our hardware kits out of the way real quick. Got two more in here. Uh, this should be all the hardware you need to build the turbo cubby. So you can just take all this and set it out aside for now while we grab all the parts out. And on top here, we've got the three structural members uh, that hold everything together and give it quite a bit of rigidity. Um, so we are calling these our, uh, uh, like our cab, tailgate, and uh, center walls. Um, the powder coat on all the turbo cubbies uh, comes standard for now as a white river texture. Um, it's a very bright white with a semi-gloss finish. We'll just get all of these gussets pulled out here and keep digging. What was the hardest part about designing the turbo cubby? Figuring a way out for lots of tolerance stacking so that everything fits well together even after powder coating it. When you have so many different bent uh, sheet metal flanges that are interlocking together and having fasteners go through them, uh, you have to have a you have to have a pretty tight tolerance to live with um, to make everything fit, actually fit together uh, and go together, which seems to be a challenge occasionally. <laughs> when you have three different pieces that are formed on, a, on our CNC press brake um, and have to fit together so that one hole is lined up through three different parts. What are we getting into here? So right here, I'm gonna pull this out and we'll see the back wall of the turbo cubby and that's what will be sitting vertically inside of your bed. Uh, this part is just completely flat. It has really no structure to it other than tying into everything else. We don't need that. What we will see next is kind of like a Russian nesting doll. It's the best way to package everything because we have a lot of parts that fit inside of each other uh, and it makes it really sleek which is why this box is so thin. So. How much does it all weigh? Stupid tape. Um, so this model here that we're unboxing right now is going into specifically a 2019 uh, Gladiator. And all of these parts, once put together with all the hardware, uh, bolts and nuts and everything, should weigh roughly between 55 and 60 pounds. What, what should people like to do for a full truck? That's 60 to 70, 65 to 70 for like a six foot, six and a half foot, maybe 75. And then an eight foot, I think you'd be looking at like 90 to 100. So, I'm gonna dig in here. Um, what we're gonna find down here will be, we've got everything wrapped together here. Uh, these are the two steel mounts, the only steel pieces involved in making it. And this is a stack of a bunch of different components. Comes with your standard shelf, uh, which is adjustable, and the standard non-structural divider, which kind of just keeps things organized and not mixing into each other when they're sitting in one of the bays. So. These are some fairly heavy steel parts. I'll slide those in right there. 
The reason that they're steel is for the strength to not pull out of the upper beam uh, or fall through and destroy your GFC. So it actually translates a lot of the load into the bed rail of your truck um, using the GFC as a support. Right here, the rest of the aluminum parts. We'll move this out of the way and then make some more space real quick. Okay. So now we can actually start unpacking all this. Really just start to pull everything out, uh, get it unpackaged so you can reference the uh, assembly manual, uh, which will be a QR code on a little uh, like business card almost that'll come in your box. And that'll take you to a website to where you can see the, the assembly instructions uh, and read them out as you would like or print them out for reference. But in here we have one of the interlocking shelf components. And here is the second part of the interlocking shelf component. And the way that these will work, so if you figure out which one goes where, they interlock like that to keep rigidity and allow it for adjustability for whichever position in any of these slots. And what we have here will be the non-structural divider, and this will fit in either the floor or on the shelf of your cabinet to keep and separate anything you like. Uh, so included standard with the turbo cubby is one of the non-structural dividers and one of the interlocking shelves. Um, you can get up to three additional uh, non-structural dividers and three additional uh, interlocking shelves. Digging further, I'm gonna pull out the top tray or the roof of the cabinet. And there's that guy. And then all that should be left in here is the floor or the bottom tray, as we call it. How are you deciding to do that? Uh, the GFC logo will fit um, at the tailgate side of the cabinet in your truck. Other way to determine that is on any of the longer pieces, like these components, there are notches, as you can see, and those indicate the cab side um, of your model. The additional reason that we use these is because it can be seen through powder coat, um, unlike etching does, which we do on our sheet metal laser to indicate part numbers um, in our production process. But the reason that there is a one, a two, and a three V-notch is for order in which we form them on the CNC press brake. So now, find the mounts. First one here will be the top mount. I know it's the top mount because it should generally be shorter than the bottom mount on the in the overall length. Um, and otherwise, the bottom mount, this will sit against your bedside just like this, uh, being the inside of the bed right here on this face um, with a generic hole pattern that we intend to possibly include and integrate accessories into later on. So I'm just gonna make a little more space to lay some of this stuff out. But I think if you had a, if you had a friend to help you uh, start some of the nuts and the washers and everything, um, probably about an hour to assemble it and then maybe another 30, 40 minutes to install it. So this is the back wall, um, just a flat piece of sheet metal and it fits inside of the bottom tray and the top tray and also interlocks with two of the vertical gussets that are underneath it. All of the support and rigidity on all of these parts comes from the top tray, the bottom tray, and the vertical gussets. They are all formed on all four sides, uh, so there's really no flexibility past those bends. This one here should be the back wall, and again, indicating front uh, or cab side, cab lower side uh, with the notch here. 
So that will fit right up against your front bed rail on the front of the bed. So next three parts, the cab wall, the tailgate wall, and the center wall uh, will all pretty much look just like each other. But in the instructions, there will be a pretty clear way to determine which is what. Uh, so you aren't putting something in the wrong spot. They have pretty precise bend angles on the um, top and bottom uh, flanges that are bent into them or formed. So this one's not a good example because this one's your center wall. Um, it doesn't, it's just bent 90 degrees in every, on every edge. But the other two are matching the cab rake angle and the tailgate rake angle that your camper topper was designed with. Um, so you can maybe see it on that part there, maybe at the top, it's not quite vertical. The tailgate wall is the one where you can see it the most drastically, which is this one. Really did a good job packaging here. But on this part, you can see it. If you were to set it on this back or this bottom edge here with the three notches, it will sit at an angle leaning forward, indicating that's your tailgate. Uh, it's going to be the most drastic angle on almost every model. If you're able to mix up the location on one of these parts, you might actually just accidentally uh, on tightening the bolts, um, go ahead and bend this flange in a direction it's not supposed to, which will result in possible cracking on the powder coat um, or not even being able to finish fitting everything together. That's all the standard parts. This will be the general hardware kit to assemble the cabinet. Uh, all it needs is a lot of bolts and a lot of nuts and a lot of washers. I believe there should be 12 standard pieces with every turbo cubby. Unless you have an eight foot bed, you'll have 13, um, which comes with an, an additional uh, structural gusset in the center. Standard hardware bags you should have is four because you will have your cabinet assembly hardware in this kit. So this is just to put it together aside from the shelf and the non-structural divider. That's your kit for the non-structural divider, kit for the shelf itself, and then your install kit with replacement plus nuts for well nut models um, and a plus nut install tool. To just uh, get started assembling your uh, turbo cubby, we will, for the vast majority of the assembly process, be just loosely starting the bolts with nuts, um, not fully tightening them yet until the um, the overall structure is built and everything's kind of loosely there. Uh, and there's an order in which we will tighten everything. So for now, we can just ditch all these tools and set them aside. First part you'll start with, is gonna be your bottom tray. It'll have your GFC logo on the tailgate side right there. Um, and then you will need the front and the, the tailgate and the cab wall, which should be these two right here. This being the tailgate wall, and this being the cab wall. Tailgate because it has the steeper angle when set, set flat versus the uh, cab wall. And being a gladiator, this one stands up pretty straight at the front. On the bottom tray, it looks different from the top tray since the top tray doesn't have a logo on either side of the front or back of the part. Whereas the bottom tray does have the logo top tray also has a shorter flange on one side, which is to allow more access at the top uh, since it sits underneath the top beam in the, in the side, of your, side of your camper or topper. Well, I'm gonna get some hardware and open this guy up. Got the general uh, Turbo Cubby hardware assembly pack. Uh, this one should be the biggest one in the kit um, and in the box out of everything else. Uh, we'll use this one basically from now until we start tightening and bolting everything together, together. <laughs> so, it's nice to kind of make yourself a little space in front of it. So you can open this guy up and pour some of these out of here. Come back and grab some more in a bit, but just so I'm not losing too many. With every nut and bolt uh, that you put on the Turbo Cubby, you'll put one washer on the bolt head side and one on the nut side. So with everything, if you're going through a hole, it should look just like that. 
It allows for any deformation or flex in the, in the panel to be expanded uh, through the hole uh, to prevent any damage or tearing. I like to, when I'm building these, I like to go through and pre uh, or add some, add some washers to all the bolts or a lot of the bolts just to start. I'm just gonna do oh, quite a bunch. We'll end up doing it with every bolt in that pack, but just so I'm not cluttering my space, I'll just do a few here. And then we can go ahead and start slapping some parts together. First thing we'll start with is putting the cab wall in the front here. Um, just make a note, don't put any holes in the back here, the center or the tailgate side. So in these corners here, don't put those in. Uh, we'll start just by putting these three in here, uh, the front corner and then this other one in the back corner. With all the hardware, uh, you'll put the bolt in through the outside of the turbo cubby. So the inside will contain the nut and then you'll just wanna loosely start that nut until it tries to grab the nylock and then let that sit and continue putting bolts in. Why is it important that they put the nut on the inside? It's just aesthetically pleasing, looking at it from the outside. No really rhyme or reason. Just loosely getting everything started here. Then we'll move to the tailgate wall and do the same thing. Moving back to the tailgate wall, take the same part. Um, it helps with this being a bent flange that's actually um, acute from the inside. So it's bent over 90 degrees. Helps with the, these walls to put them in sideways and kind of rotate them in or else get kind of stuck. Again, just putting the bolt head from the outside and in. Once you get one of these bolts and nuts loosely started, the part will pretty much stay there without any problems. Start with just these three. If you're standing at it from the outside here uh, with the tailgate side on your right, um, this will be the outside of your truck or the side of your truck here, as this is a driver model for the Gladiator. Um, we don't want to put a bolt in back here yet, um, and we will go through and do all of the bottom ones. Uh, after we get most of, the, most of the whole thing put together, we'll tip it over on its side. Um, but we don't want to put any in this back here because we need to slide the back wall into everything uh, once, or actually right now. And then the next thing we'll do so why we haven't put bolts in in these corners here is because we need to take the back wall, orient it with this being your cab lower side. So I know this is the front bottom with the notch. Um, and we'll take this guy and just go slide it in place. So you want to slide it in between those flanges that are back there in the front and the back side of the turbo cubby and maybe do a little jimmy in to get them aligned up with that hole right here. That has to go through three separate parts. And that's when you can take a bolt and finally get it through there and loosely secure with a nut. We'll do the same thing at the cab side. And here we can actually go ahead and continue putting them in vertically. Um, just not the very top hole on this edge. So we'll start here at the bottom and then still got quite a bit of movement with everything being loose. We can get this one in as well, but we still need to cap the top with the top tray. So we'll leave that one out for now. And then <laughs> move back to the tailgate side with some wobbly. We'll do the same thing, get that that one bolt right in the middle and get that one loosely started as well. All right, I got it. Okay. Ah. Then we will cap it and enclose everything using your top tray. Again, denoting the cab side with the three notches. So if you're confused at how to um, 
orient this part. You could find the three notches on the bottom tray, which is this part that we've been using since the beginning, and just line these up right on top of it up here. And it helps to grab that one corner there and then kind of just lay it on top and it'll sit on. And now we can go through, loosely start any bolt that is going through two pieces of sheet metal or three from the back here, which will be one here, two on this face, one on this face and two on top. And the same goes for the front, one on this side, two on the front face, one on the back face and two on top. Get the last two on top. And again, as long as the orientation of all these parts is correct and any of these holes are not lining up, that means something's wrong. You should never have to force a bolt through a hole um, as long as you're leaving everything loose as you start putting parts together. Grab some more washers real quick. I got all the ones at the back here. We got this bolt, that bolt, this bolt, this bolt, this bolt, and this bolt. We'll do the same the cab side. All of these fasteners are so quarter 20 uh, by 5 8 inch stainless steel with a thin grade eight uh, lock nut and zinc washers. What was the process like choosing the powder coat and the finish? Choosing the powder coat, um, one of something that looks aesthetically pleasing, once you have it open, especially when it's dark, you'll still be able to see quite well what's in here, at least figures, um, and the texture is a purpose to show damage less. Uh, so the functionality of the Turbo Cubby is you're gonna be putting stuff in and out of it quite often. Uh, so as long as you can hide any minimal scratches or at least lessen the way that they look um, more, it's best to have a powder coat that can handle that. If we screwed up and you don't have enough of one of these washers uh, or one of the bolts or one of the thin lock nuts, uh, the thread is a quarter 20 um, by 5 eighths for the bolt. So it's a 5 eighths inch length quarter 20 bolt. Uh, so if you're in a bit of a rush to try and get, get everything assembled and in your truck, uh, you can head to a hardware store and find any, any quarter 20 bolt that might, uh, that might fit well. Uh, I recommend the button heads and uh, 5 eighths inch length just because it keeps it as flush mounted on the inside as possible. Um, if you're unable to find a thin quarter 20 lock nut, any other lock nut, well, standardized lock nut will work just fine. And this is a grade eight yellow uh, zinc chromate, I think. I think that's what it is, uh, at least the finish on it. Most of which these fasteners should be pretty easily uh, found at a, at a local hardware store. The next thing we can do is continue to tie this back wall in to the bottom tray and the top tray. Uh, there's two securing fasteners to keep this whole back wall from bowing in and out like this, um, right here on the top and the bottom. Uh, don't do these three center ones yet, as that's where our center, uh, center wall will come into play um, and just give you two bays and quite a lot more uh, rigidity This is also the part where it might be helpful to find a friend or another person to help you get some of these nuts started if you're unable to reach around the entire tire cabinet. You still could do it by yourself uh, if you're tall and crafty enough and like, like to be, um, what's that, flexible? <laughs> so I'm just reaching around, finding that hole. And then I'll get this one started. If you aren't able to grab a few threads with one of these nuts, uh, back off before you start cross-threading it from the start. Uh, sometimes being a thin lock nut and minimal threads on the nut, it'll catch to where it'll want to cross-thread. So until you're able to get a few, a few spins, maybe a full rotation or a ro couple rotations on the, bolt, on the nut, um, you wanna make sure that it does rotate so you're not cross-threading it. 
having the cutout in the back here uh, makes it quite a lot easier to find those holes and locate them. Cool. Now we can get the uh, center wall put in. And then once that's in there, we'll tip it over and put all the fasteners in the bottom. The middle one, um, it has uh, bend relief cutouts that kind of look like a circle in each corner, whereas the cab and the tailgate walls, they just have a 90 degree turn there or cut. I don't know if you can still see it well enough or not. You might be able to in there. But orientation on this guy, uh, you want the two V notches and three V notches on your side, or in other sense, uh, the flat side of the whole wall will be towards the tailgate of the cabinet. So this is the three notch and the two notch, and to orient this, if you're looking at it the way I am, with the tailgate side on your right, the two and three notch corner will be right there down next to your waistline. And with this part going in after all of this is installed, um, starting with an angle and kind of an odd one. You wanna stick it in like this, flatten out the bottom side so it's like that, and then keep it at an angle as you pull it in until it kind of slides in. And you should be able to slide it in pretty easily. Line it up with the three holes on the back wall and this one hole here at the front. So you got one, two, three. There's one here at the bottom and one here at the top. And there is two more on the top as well here. Once those are lined up, you can keep adding loose fasteners. If this part is an extreme snug fit, um, it should be kind of snug, but it shouldn't be overly tight to where you're having to, having to bang it or anything like, anything like that to, to get it started. This center wall is perfectly centered on the bottom tray. So if you measured from this front wall uh, to the center wall and from the tailgate wall to the center of this bend, it should be pretty, pretty exact um, as to the length of this. <laughs> Getting rowdy over there. And here's where it might be helpful to have a friend, but reaching around to get these back two here. You have this one. Using the cutout helps as well. If these holes uh, passing through three parts on this tray aren't lining up, it can help to do a little, a little, grab one of the parts and kind of jiggle it and you'll find some movement in the hole to line it up a little better. Sweet. That's every bolt that we can put in uh, with it oriented like this. So next we want to get the three bolts that go in the bottom of each of the walls here. You see three down here at the bottom, one, two, three. And we've got three in each wall location. And all I'll do to get there, is tip it over and stand up for a minute. Sometimes I wish my hands weren't so fat. <laughs> then the last bolt for now is up in this corner. Once this guy is in there, you can set aside the rest of your fasteners. Tip it back up. Set it back down. Now we can go start tightening everything together in, in order. So we'll start with the four on the cab side of your cabinet. The other four on the tailgate side of your cabinet here. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll do the six on the access side of the cabinet. And then go through on the back side of the cabinet. 
We'll do all of these ones running down the length of the bottom, as well as the front, the center, the length of the top, and then the tailgate side. And after that, we'll tip back over where we just had it. We'll do all the ones on the bottom that we put in very last, and then tip it back up and tighten the ones on the top. Uh, so right now we're gonna go get um, a 7 16 wrench or a socket and a 5 30 seconds drive uh, drill with a, with a clutch in it to not over tighten in strip bolts or nuts. I'm gonna go ahead and start tightening the, uh, the cab face bolts, the four that are at the top and the bottom. Uh, this is also where it might be helpful to have a friend to be able to access and reach both the bolt head with a drill or some kind of Allen key, um, and then secure the nut with a socket or a wrench. As far as how tight to get these, you don't wanna over tighten them and strip the thin lock nut here, um, but you don't wanna just leave them loose so where they're moving. So just get them pretty snug. I'm on 18 on a clutch, but this clutch is kind of burned. So won't work as well as probably a newer one or a lightly used one. And the reason that we tighten these in this order is um, keeps everything pulling it together to, to the way it's supposed to fit together uh, as we modeled it. It means if you tighten it in a different order, you might end up with some gaps in places where the model uh, wasn't meant to be. So it's important to keep it that way to keep the right geometry shape and keep everything lining up well. Like the once installing in the truck, we've got the upper mount holes that need to locate into slots. Um, and doing it in any other any other different order, they might be slightly off and you might end up having to like force it or possibly loosen and retighten things until it fits together. But there's many interlocking parts and pieces that there are, that there are into this. Um, it's pretty important to have the order well lined out so that everything does fit together the way that it's supposed to. Okay, we got the cab and the tailgate side. And then we'll do the access side. And then do the back side. We'll be reaching around it. And if your arms aren't too long, it might be kind of hard to get the, the, uh, the wrench on the nut and the drill on the bolt at the same time. And this is where it is helpful to have a friend. We still gotta do all the ones that are running down this back leg here, on the bottom and the top. Cool. Then, should be good. Gently tip it over and tighten up those three, these three, and the tailgate three. Should be good on that. We'll tip it back up. And all that's left will be six of them on top. We've got two in the front, two in the center, and two in the back. And now, if you jiggle it, there shouldn't be any rattling. I missed one. What did I miss? What? I thought I got this one. Oh, perfect example. I think I cross-threaded it. I started it. Maybe not, but maybe so. It did not want to tighten any further than that, though. Nope. Really? <laughs> Cross-thread it, you should remove it and replace it with a new 
bolt and a new nut. The kit should come with the exact quantities. This might be a defective nut, to be honest. Nope, I definitely cross-rated it. Oops. A new nut, this shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, it's finally got the right number of rotations, so. Much better. Now it should pass the jiggle test. And that's the basic assemb assembly. Um, for now, we still leave the shelf and the non-structural divider out of the, the cabinet to aid in installation. Uh, having access pockets here and then nothing in your way in either of the bays here makes it a lot easier to actually reach and get some of the hardware uh, started when you're installing the cabinet. Uh, we will go get a truck uh, this one we're going to get a 2019 Jeep Gladiator and we will start removing some of the bed clamps and installing the plus nuts to install the cabinet in your truck. Alright, so now we got our truck. Uh, first thing to do to get the cabinet installed is to prep your camper. Um, with the camper, it's easiest if you pop the tent open, remove all of your transforma floor, and then we'll get to removing the braces for better access, removing the lower bed clamps, uh, upper bed clamps too if you don't have the billet bed clamps, which are required for the cabinet. And then we'll be installing the plus nut, um, adjusting the lower bed clamps, and then start getting into installing the mounts and installing the cabinet. So let's get into popping this guy open. Uh, gives you more access inside the bed as you'll be working in there in certain bolts, um, configuring the cabinet and lining it up with the mounts and everything. If you have the topper, I would say keep clear of your head uh, and make sure you're not going to hit it on anything. Uh, you'll still have plenty of space in the back. It'll just be kind of hunched over for a little bit while you're getting all the bolts and everything aligned and situated. Now, with the turbo nap. Floor squares. And the last piece. Just set those aside while we're working on installing the turbo cubby. And then we can get a few panels open and start by removing these braces and then your lower bed clamps in here. Uh, to remove the braces, we'll use a 3 16 Allen key and lower bed clamps will be a 5 16 Allen key. And I forgot to mention the 3 16 Allen key in the beginning of building the cabinet, but that's the only tool you need to get these guys out right here. Removing the braces uh, for the cabinet for general use and light off-roading um, is fully okay. We highly recommend if you're gonna go mobbing down some dirt roads and some tough terrain to reinstall them. And if you do, uh, torque these. Hey, Joey, what do we torque the uh, uh, braces to? 20 foot pounds. 20 foot pounds. Yeah, we'll retorque these bolts to 20 foot pounds if you're gonna reinstall. Um, which it's nice to keep these with the cabinet in case you do get into some tougher terrain. Um, but for everyday use and driving to some local camp spots and dirt roads or anything like that, the cabinet does provide enough rigidity to replace the braces just for those hardcore off-road fellas and ladies. <laughs> Where should people put their braces then? Um, you'll have a small access pocket between the turbo cubby um, and the lower beam here that actually fits the braces pretty well. So you can keep them there and maybe find a Ziploc and stow the bolts somewhere in the cab or in the, or in the cabinet. If you lose the bolts, I don't actually know what these ones are. I know they're a 5 16 uh, by 5 8 5 16 18 by 5 8 uh, flat pan head or countersunk bolt. Um, if you lose them, you can always reach back out to us and try and source them from us, or should be able to find them at a hardware store as well. Just maybe not in the special coating that we have these ones coated in. And always, re always make sure to reapply Loctite on these. And if possible, reapply the, um, the torque seal paint um, as you torque them to be able to watch and see if they are moving at all and coming loose. And that prevents any possible 
failure or damage. So next we'll get into loosening the braces. Uh, I mean the lower bed clamps. Where for this one, it's nice to have a hex Allen key in an L shape, but also nice to have a socket 5 16 Allen key, uh, just as it's a really long bolt. So once you break it loose and it's pretty, pretty tight once it's in there and Loctited, because we torque these to 40 foot pounds. Once you break it loose though, it's a lot easier to just zip it out with some kind of drill or impact. I'll do the other one too. A couple turns. And go to a drill. Well, this drill might struggle a little, to be honest. So I'm gonna hold the plate nut that's inside the lower bed here as it comes out. It's just right there, the black plate nut. Get it fully loose. Pull your lower bed clamp. In-house billet. This guy is loose. <laughs> oh, that's because I just loosened it. I'm an idiot. <laughs> So we'll set these guys apart. Later on, we'll go readjust uh, how these actually cinch the camper to your bed um, because we're gonna be inserting one of the mounts between the upper bed clamp here and the lower bed clamp. And that's where we get all of the, all of the strength out of the turbo cubby. Next, we'll go through, we're gonna remove our factory well nuts up here and replace them with your plus nut mounting kit. Which looks like this guy. You have plus nuts um, inserted. These will actually kind of bloom out to almost like a flower on the inside of your beam and conform to the, the radius of the beam. And it provides a lot of strength out of a thin piece of sheet metal. Not sheet metal, extrusion. <laughs> Start here, you'll just need the plus nuts and then a plus nut install tool. This gives you something to actually install it and force that plus nut to expand and conform to the beam. So we'll start just by doing that. So you have the bolt, the long bolt. It goes through threads into the plus nut, but between there we have a washer, a, uh, what do they call these? It's a very tall nut and another washer. But next, We'll climb up into the bed. Actually, helps to have maybe like a box or something to sit on in the bed. And we've had this guy since I've been working here. So now, once the well nuts that are inside the beam up here are installed for quite a while, uh, the rubber actually forms to a bulb on the back side. So pull the, pull the bolt and the washer off all the way. If they come off and set those aside. And these ones might be helpful to have a pair of pliers to kind of wiggle them out. Kind of bulbed out. Should be two up here for every model. Um, it's possible if you have an eight foot bed, you will have three. If that is the case, the install kit will come with the correct number of plus nuts. There's the last guy. And unless you want to keep these as spares for the rest of them in your camper that are all over, you don't need them. Then we'll grab a half inch socket and a half inch wrench. There's a half inch, and then the wrench I got over here. Installing the plus nuts can be done with a ratchet. It is much easier with a drill or impact, just because it takes a little bit of force to start breaking it. With the install tool, all you gotta do is thread the tool onto the plus nut to get it kind of snug and can't thread it anymore. You grab it with your um, 
your impact or your ratchet wrench. Then all you're gonna do is take it and take the plus nut, push it right in the hole, secure it with the wrench, and then should be able to tighten it until it doesn't want to tighten anymore. I'm using the drill setting because I know the impact's not gonna be strong enough on this one. This drill's not that good. If you wanna give me the other one, actually, it'd be better right there. Yeah, that guy will put these in there real, real easy. Uh, this is a higher impact uh, Milwaukee drill. These ones are pretty beefy. I'm on two on this guy. Once you start feeling the plus nut uh, get tighter and tighter and tighter, and then until it's almost like you have to really, really put some force into turning it, you know it's installed all the way. So then you can back the tool out with the, with the washer and then the tall nut and another washer. We'll put our other plus nut and thread it on and do the same thing in the other hole at the front. Let's get that guy. Just pop it right in the hole. Secure with the wrench again. That time you could hear the drill actually start struggling and I know it's in there all the way. So we got all those in. So we only need to use two of the uh, plus nuts at the top for the um, old well nut holes. Uh, because the lower mount gets pinched by the lower bed clamp and the upper bed clamp. So you're translating a lot of the load into the bed and through the camper and not through the beam in a large, what is that? It's a large moment. It creates a lot of, a lot of force that actually twists the whole camper this way. Um, and the well nuts are not strong enough to hold it at the top. Uh, so that's why we incorporated the plus nuts. They're much stronger much stronger component. What, we're, what we were just doing is replacing the factory well nuts with a plus nut. And as I can show you, it kind of blooms like a flower on the inside and actually deforms a nut. And your threads are far down here. So this is what it should look like inside of the beam up here after you get the tool fully installed. The next thing we'll do is adjust the lower bed clamps. They have different height settings uh, that change where it grabs and grips onto the bed rail. Um, and what we need to do on this is move it one further up, which in turn moves the bed clamp one further down on the mount. Um, and that is because we are spacing the lower bed clamp further off of the upper bed clamp, since we'll have a steel part in between these two. So what we need to do is actually raise the two billet pieces there so that they actually grab the bed rail right. We'll take this bolt and this nut, the bolt being on the backside, and the nut, and we're gonna shift them one of these circular pockets up. So from there, just one up. They should only need a half inch socket just for access and a steady grip. So we'll take it here. I can show you if you want. Take it, we'll pull it out of that one and just go one further up. And when you're doing so, make sure that these teeth on the two billet pieces don't change. You want them to look just like that. Um, it's pretty easy to see. If you lose where you're at, like I can take this whole thing apart, and just toss it to the side. You should be able to see some rub marks. Maybe get to some light. Should be able to see some rub, rub, rub marks there. It'll tell you kind of where it was before. This one has two, couldn't tell you why. But I know I was in this one, so I'm just gonna put it in the one just higher than that. Get that tight. Then we'll hold on to these until we get to putting the bottom mount it back in. But first, we'll grab the rest of our mount kit here and the upper mount. Get some Loctite on these two bolts after we put the washers on. And then we'll hoist the upper mount in and get that uh, loosely in place. Just prepping the rest of the hardware, the 5 16 bolts. Uh, these are 5 16 by one inch um, hex head bolts. Uh, these will be used for the upper mount and then some blue Loctite. We'll get some on the bolts. Now those are ready. We can go over 
and grab the top mount again. And just to remember, with the mounts, we're using the V-notch notification to indicate the cab side of the part. And the difference between the top and the bottom mounts, the top mount will be shorter than the bottom mount right there. And the bottom mount also includes the holes uh, to adapt for future accessories. So we'll leave that bottom mount for next and grab the top. This part's the part where it is really helpful to have a friend. I don't have any, <laughs> but I'll be able to do it. <laughs> so we'll take the top mount, um, indicating with the V-notch at the cab and for the mount that goes into the plus nuts, there should only be two slots instead of six. So the six locks are, are to secure the cabinet in the camper. So we'll take this, we'll line it up with the bolt through, and get that side started. And you can leave it a little loose for now. And go to the other side, get that side started. And for later help in installing the cabinet, it's kind of nice to, can I grab a half inch wrench for the top mount? It's kind of nice to take it. There's some adjustability up and down in the mount itself. And for the cabinet install later, it helps to slide it all the way up and maybe just give it a quick little snug so it stays in place. while you're installing the cabinet. And our bed clamps, and we'll reapply some Loctite into the plate nuts as well. So you don't want your camper going anywhere. These plate nuts will go inside the bed clamp here. So they'll fit in just like this to the upper slot, which grabs your bed rail and that bolt in the upper mount. But with a friend again, it's a lot easier to have someone hold the mount while you align the plate nut you go ahead and grab our bottom mount. And with this guy, the face with all the slots is the face that will sit horizontal in the bed just like this, with the V-notch on the cab side. And it helps uh, prep yourself with a 5 16 Allen wrench. What we can do here is I'm going to put the plate nut in the lower bed clamp and set it aside so I can just grab it real quick. Grab the bottom mount, you line it up with the two bolts sticking from the upper mount. Okay, there we go. Holding that in place, you can make sure to hook the bed rail down there. Just like that, and take plate nut. Sometimes it helps to just hold the bed clamp real low until you get threads. Because then once you get the thread started, it's hanging there and you could push up and hook the bed rail and then keep going. I'm gonna keep these a little loose so we have some adjustability back and forth. Do the same at the front. The threads, I think that's them. And remember to keep that loose so you have some mobility in the lower bottom mount. So, got the mounts in the, in the camper. Last thing we need to do before we toss this thing in there um, is pre-prepare some bolts with the washer. Uh, this will be kind of key because once we hoist it up in there, you can toss a bolt into one of the slots once you line up the hole with the top tray here. And it will secure it and keep it from falling. Uh, but it's best to at least hold some pressure on it uh, to keep it from falling, just to make sure. Let's grab a few of these, get those started. Grab a bunch of the washers from the hardware install kit and a bunch of the nuts as well. And we'll take it to the bed and set all these guys down in here, somewhere where you can grab them easily in a minute. And then essentially, how the mount goes, once we take the cabinet and we hoist it into the bed, we'll get it in there and you're gonna wanna hold it so it's tilted back 
uh, towards the inside of the bed. Um, and the bottom of the cabinet is going to sit on the bottom mount right here. Uh, and the top mount will sit on the top of the cabinet. So essentially we're pinching it with the mounts almost. Um, but the way we'll install it is with it angled like that, we'll situate it forward, set it on the bottom mount, and then tilt it up and line up the top mount. Take one of your bolts and pop it in through the top here where the, one of the slots is in the top mount. And then with a washer and a nut, we'll secure it at the top. And once you get at least one bolt in the top and one bolt in the bottom, it'll be pretty secure to go ahead and, and let it rest while you uh, line up the rest of the holes in the slots. So. Situating it in. So, you grab it like that, hoist it in at an angle, go ahead, set it on the bottom mount, tilt up into place, and then be able to line up one of these holes in the top mount with the slot up there. So looking at one of this hole, and then the slot in the top, you'll be able to take a bolt, and pop it through there. There should be a decent gap. Yeah. Got one of the bolts here. You got quite a bit of a gap between the two. And then I'm just gonna take a washer and a nut and get them started on the bottom so it can't go anywhere. And I'm holding it with my knee right now. Um, but if you have some kind of box or a stand that you can fit beneath it, that will help. That would not be a bad idea to have on hand. And make sure to, dump, to not cross thread it like I did earlier. There we go. And then that one's in there, can't tip back and it's sitting on the bottom mount. So now you should be able to situate it and line it up down here with one of the bottom mount, mount positions and find where that needs to go through. Do the same thing with the washer and one of the nuts. I'm working right here at the bolt in, put a washer on it and get and nut started. And once that's done, can't really go anywhere. So I'm gonna take the top mount and loosen it up so it's actually sitting back down where we can adjust it. And this is where that long extension I had earlier comes in hand. Cause you'll need to be able to get a hold of this bolt up here in the top mount. There we are. So now the top mount can sit down flush on it. And then with a friend who we'll go through and line up all the other securing holes, get a bolt and a nut on them started as well. Going on the wall right here. This should be six bolts on the top and six bolts on the bottom three in each of the bays. Right. Wait, Hello. I need a stool. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, welcoming Mary Kate, another one of our fellow engineers here uh, and friend mm -hmm. that will help me finish uh, pre-installing all of the rest of our um, mount securing bolts and nuts. I will be inserting the bolts because uh, I can't reach into the furthest front bay here to get the last six bolts for the top and bottom that we need to secure the cabinet in place. Now I lay down in a dirty bed. Okay. Next. Okay. And then the last one on the bottom. Oh, I got that. Okay. Cool. Three more on the top. And your last one. Okay. Cool. So the last thing to do is tighten everything down. We'll start with the bed clamp bolt with a 5 16 Allen. Um, and when you're doing that, you wanna make sure to take the lower mount and push it as far into the bed as you can, just as a good thumb rule. 
outside the truck. So towards the bed rail. And once that's done, we can secure the bottom mount bolts for the cabinet. And then we'll secure the top mount bolts for the cabinet and then secure the top mount. Gadget, get out of here. This is Skagit. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're retightening uh, the bed clamp bolt here, uh, you're gonna want to torque it to 40 foot pounds. To start with, you can tighten it with an impact on a lower setting. This one's set to two right now. And then come back with a torque wrench. There's 40 foot pounds. longer than I thought. <laughs> there we go. It's bottom mount. So now we'll tighten the securing bolts on the bottom of the cabinet to the bottom mount. Yeah, you need the 7 the nuts, Hold the top with the... Right. Yeah. For the instructions. You made the instructions. <laughs> <laughs> There's that for you. Yeah. And then I take a 5 16 or 5 30 seconds Allen key and I go in the bed. Before you tighten these bolts down, you wanna take the cabinet and push it in the same direction as you just pushed the bottom mount so that it is as close, if not contacting, the bed, uh, the bed clamp right here. Do you We're looking pretty good. Loosen it. And... Ready? Yeah. Ugga dugga. We got all the lower securing bolts moved up. Now, before we tighten the upper ones, with the cabinet, it still kind of wiggles a little bit. There's still a little bit of movement in it. And the way we want to align it is the curve on the top tray right here that goes right there, and the curve on the mount right here, the radius. We want to line those up so there isn't like a ledge here. So even them up so it's just about like that. Instead of that. Next. Okay. Here's the last securing bolt. Sweet. Once that's done, we just have two more bolts to secure the top mount to the upper beam into the plus nuts which is why we'll need a half inch socket and a variety of extensions. Nice, we we'll also need the drill. <laughs> so we still have a missing panel here. Um, once the install of the cabinet's done, we would have gone through and installed the cover plate, which just covers this. So it keeps all your stuff from falling in your bed in the cabinet. Uh, but this cutout is for a slider. Uh, which is an additional accessory that we're still prototyping and finalizing, which are what all of these holes going from the back to the front of the back wall are. Um, and I didn't make a cover plate on this one because I've got a slider for it that we're gonna prototype uh, later on. The one right here and the one in the front that's underneath your fixed floor. And I'm just gonna go ahead and get on that guy and tighten him up. We get those good and tight, and she's not going anywhere. The last couple things we can do is go ahead and install the interlocking shelf. Let's grab that in the hardware kit. We've only got two hardware kits left. The interlocking shelf will include four, uh, four of the, the bolts and eight washers and four nuts, and that is because in various spots in the cabinet, the shelf will need to slide to be able to mount. And what you do is in an extreme spot, you're gonna line it up to where you want it in which slot and figure out your furthest most holes on either side. And that's where you wanna put the fasteners. First things first, orientation of the shelf, the interlock, there's always one that's slightly smaller that'll be inside the other one. That's your upper shelf, and that needs to go to the tailgate side and your lower shelf towards the cab side. And the reason that is, is because 
for clearance reasons, these bends have cutouts here uh, so that if you are, say, interlocking somewhere where it might touch one of the bolts, you have space to where it won't hit the bolt. Say we wanted to put it up here in the third slot down, we would do something like that and then scooch it in just a little bit so that we can tilt it, pull it out, and we know we need a bolt in that slot and a bolt in that slot. So again, making sure you have a washer on the bolt head side and a washer on the nut side. The bolt head will go through the top of the tray. And then you wanna loosely just get that nut started on the bottom. And do that in three other spots. You want the bolts to be as far away as possible but still go through both of the shelf parts. So one there, one right there. And we'll leave these loose so that it can still move in and out. So you can set it in and set it properly and then tighten once it's in the, in the cabinet. All right, now we've got a fully adjustable shelf still with about two and a quarter inches of play in it. You're gonna want to slide them as far together as you can. And then you go back to the spot where you marked and want to put the shelf in. And with the lower shelf going towards the cab side, you can stick one side in the slot where the fingers will hold it in place and slide it out and line up the other side and then let it rest while it's loose. And grab a 5 30 seconds Allen key and a 7 16 wrench. So while you're tightening this guy up, you wanna make sure that it's just spread as far out as you can. And then tightening the bolts, they can slide a little bit too. Make sure to push them as far apart as you can. So you don't want them here, you wanna push them all the way out. And then take the first bolt, tighten it up, go to your second one, and make sure to move it as far away from the other one as possible. And then do the same on the other two. Now the reason for these two uh, finger tabs that hold it in place in the elevation that it is, is so you can buy an additional shelf and put another one right next to it going the length back that way, if you'd so like. And the last standard component is your non-structural divider. This kind of just keeps parts and things separate from each other. So you can have different items in different places. It's just a separator wall. And this guy can go in any one of these location holes that fit in the bottom tray or even on the shelf, anywhere you'd like. So I'm gonna pick there. They will go in the same slots that we just assembled the shelf in or the pre-drilled holes or pre-cut holes um, in the bottom tray here. So they could fit right there or even here or up here. And that's where we're gonna put it in this one, right there. And on this one, we'll put the bolt through the bottom and up into the same hole there. The shelf kind of follows this because the bolt head is much lower profile than the, than the nut side. Uh, so if you're having stuff sit on the inside here, it just isn't in the way as much and it won't grab on things if you have a bagger or something or a strap. Um, but in the divider, it's so close to the wall here that we're gonna follow the same rule with the rest of the cabinet where the bolt head is coming from the bottom. Line it up in the slot somewhere that makes sense and then grab the same 5 30 seconds Allen key and 7 16 wrench you had for the shelf. Go ahead, tighten those guys up. And there you have it. There will be places too. So if we had the shelf uh, maybe in one more slot up here in the mounting locations, or even the top one, it might contact the roof. We tried to optimize the height of the non-structural divider uh, to fit in most of the locations for where the shelf can sit. But if you have it in the 
highest spot or you have another shelf here, it might not be able to fit in between them or below them. Um, we just tried to optimize it so you can separate things well enough and not have them mixing in. But otherwise, I think that's the GFC Turbo Cubby install and assembly. Um, one thing with our, the lugs that the braces were held in with, uh, don't remove these in case you need to reinstall your braces, which you can store right in here. They fit kind of nicely. Um, just safekeeping. And if you needed, you can reinstall the bolt or the, the bolts in the spots they go for storage. But minus cover plate, which would just include uh, six more bolts to hold it in. Well, that's about it. Uh, my name's Cody with GFC, and that's how you install and assemble a turbo cubby.